Welcome back to another Godot recipe. In this video, we're going to take the 3D kinematic body that we did in a previous recipe, which you can see the link for below, and we're going to learn how to align it with a surface so that it can climb up hills and drive over terrain smoothly. To create my terrain, I've downloaded the modular terrain pack, which you can find on itch.io. Again, I'll put the link below. And this is a pack that has all sorts of terrain models in it for a lot of different things. Um, I'm not going to be using most of this for this demo, but you know it lets you create a lot of um, a lot of different environments, and they're modular, so it's basically broken up into pieces that you kind of snap together uh, like Legos. So, uh, so I dropped those into my project, and I've used them to create a little bit of terrain. And so I want my tank to be able to drive, you know, climb up this hill and drive around just like it does on the flat surface. Okay, so if we try it out with our tank as it exists with the code to drive around, you'll see there'll be a, a few problems. One is when we climb up the slopes, right, our tank doesn't rotate. So it looks like it is floating in air if you're off the side, right, on a corner like this or something, right? The other problem we have, or another problem we have, is that if you stop moving on your way up a slope, you get a little bounce, if you can see that. And because the, the y velocity remains and lifts us up off the slope like that. And then the last one is that if I remain still with no input, I'm slowly sliding down the slope. So these are the things we need to address to get the tank movement to look better when dealing with terrain. So to begin with, we could add the stop on slope parameter here to move and slide, but that's not going to stop our bouncing. For that, we're going to need to change to move and slide with snap. And what that'll let us do is snap to the surface. We've got to change the parameters a little bit. We give it our velocity, then we need to give it the snap vector. And we're going to use vector 3 dot down. And we'll multiply it by 2 to make it 2 units long. And then vector 3 dot up is still our up vector, and then true for stop on slope. So now that'll take care of some of that um, incorrect movement. Right When I stop on the slope, I don't bounce. And when I let go of it, I'm not sliding down the slope. Okay, So that takes care of the keeping the body attached to the slope. So in order to orient our tank with the terrain, we need to consider the surface normal. And what that means is on every mesh, there are faces. And since this is low poly terrain, meaning low number of polygons, we can easily see the faces. This will work on high poly terrain as well, but this makes it easier for us to see a little bit. So you see on this slope, there's one face here, there's one face here, there's a small face here, and then there's the flat one on the top, right? And each face of a mesh has a normal, which is a vector Right, a normal vector and a unit vector are the same thing. So it's a, a unit uh, length, one length vector that's pointing perpendicularly out of the surface. And it helps you understand which way the surface is facing, right? So this one's going to have one pointing out diagonally like this. This one will be at a steeper angle. The one on the ground points straight up, right? And so when you collide with the collision mesh of this terrain, you can get the normal of the mesh where you collided. And we want to take that normal and use that to set our tank's direction as well. Now our tank has a, let me make sure we're in local mode, right? Our tank has a local transform and that controls its orientation, right? And the normal of the slope where we hit is what we want the tank's Y basis to be. Right, so if it's going up a hill, it needs to. Oops, I'm rotating the head. If it hits, if it hits a hill and starts going over, we need to rotate this y vector so that the y vector matches the normal of the slope. 
and if it's going to the side you know it'll be tilted and so on. So in order to do this we're going to need to understand a vector operation called the cross product. So here I have two vectors that are located in space and I want to take the cross product of these two vectors and when I do I get this. All right, so the cross product of two vectors is a third vector that is perpendicular to both of them. And its length is actually proportional to the angle between them. So you see if I rotate the x vector as it gets closer and closer to the green vector, the cross product gets shorter. As it gets farther away again, see I'm on the other side, it's now extending in the opposite direction. and and so on. So a cross product, with what you really need to remember is a cross product gives you a vector that's perpendicular to the two vectors that you crossed. And we're going to use that to get our new orientation of three perpendicular axes for our tank. Okay, so here's another example. So we have our tank with its transform basis of the three vectors as it's sitting flat on the ground. And we've collided with a slope and this gray vector represents the normal of that slope. So we need to rotate this tank so that this green arrow is pointing along the gray arrow and that the blue and red arrows rotate along with it, right? That these three things stay perpendicular. So the first thing we could do is we could just set the basis dot y equal to the gray vector, which would move the green arrow there. I'm leaving a dimmed version of the original axes so you can see where they started. So now our y-axis is pointing this way, but this is a problem because now they're not orthogonal, right? They're not all perpendicular to each other. So the engine will try and orthonormalize or make them perpendicular, and the result you get is that. Now these are perpendicular again now, but all we've done is we've rotated this portion to point upwards, but we haven't rotated to the side. So we need to get our, we, we're going to need to change our x as well. And the way we're going to figure out what the new x needs to be is we're going to take the cross product of this normal with the z. And when we do that, we get a new x which you see the new x now points that direction. We orthonormalize one more time, and now the y matches. So now we have completed our transformation. We've rotated the y to point along the new normals uh, vector, and the x and z have changed. And notice too that the z has only changed vertically. It hasn't changed left and right. So our tank will still be pointing in the same direction, right? Because the negative z is our forward direction, but we will have changed orientation. And we'll do a quick transform here so you can see that. Right? That's what the new tank's orientation will be. And so that's, we're going to write some code to do that. It's basically three steps, as you saw. Change the y, change the x, and then you get the result. So here's our tank code, and we're going to write a function to do those steps that I'm going to call align with y. And you pass it a transform, and you pass it a new y vector. In our case, that new y will be the normal of the slope. So we take our transform and we set its basis dot y equal to the new y, which is what we did we set the transforms basis dot x equal to the negative z crossed with the new y. Right? That was the second step that we saw. And then the last thing we have to do is orthonormalize it. And there's a command for that. Basis dot orthonormalize. And then we just return that new transform. And so this is our handy little function to take any transform and align it with some new up vector. Now, note that there is a function built in to the spatial node called look, look at. 
the problem with look at is look at will rotate a body to align its negative z with some vector. So we would have had to calculate what the new z would be and it wouldn't have saved us any time. It actually would have been a little bit more difficult. So this is going to make it pretty easy. So now we need to check if we collided. Right? So after we move, so we have to say get slide count get slide collision all right so we get the collision we get the slide collision that occurred and that's going to have a normal in it so we're going to then set our global transform equal to align with y the global transform comma collision dot normal okay and so that'll align our tanks y let's see how that looks Okay, here we go. We're going to go climb up the hill. Okay, now some problems, right? You see that it is changing orientation, but it's very, there we go. It's a little bit of a problem, right? The problem is happening, have you figured it out? Because we've got, we're touching more than one slope at the same time. So it's trying to align with both of them. And that is a big problem. Right? We don't want that. What we really want is to align with whatever one face is right under us. See, if we're only touching one face, we're aligned correctly. But as soon as we're touching more than one, it's a problem. So what we're going to do to fix that is on our tank, we're going to add a raycast. And we're just going to make sure that ray raycast is enabled, and we're going to point it downwards, negative 2 and it's just pointing straight down from the center of the tank. And we'll use that to get our normal so that it doesn't matter if the treads are touching more than one slope, we'll basically get the average. We'll get the one that's in between. We'll get the one face that's directly beneath the tank. All right, back over to our code. We can get rid of the slide stuff. We're not gonna use the, we're not gonna use the kinematic body collision to get our normal. We're gonna use the raycast. So we're going to say the normal is the raycast get collision normal. And then we will use that in our align with y to align just with the normal that the raycast sees. So let's see how that looks. OK, so here we go. Now as I go up the slopes, I'm not going to stutter when I'm hitting more than one. But we are still getting some snapping, right? Because as soon as I cross from one to another, I snap to that face, which looks very awkward, right? I'm not getting the jittering back and forth between multiple faces, but it is very jerky because the transitions between the faces are very sudden. But we can fix that with a little bit of interpolation. So instead of taking the global transform and assigning it right away, we're going to we're going to take this align with y that returns a, a transform, right? So let's just get the one that was returned, and then we're going to tell our global transform we're going to set that equal to itself interpolated with the new transform. And by how much depends on you. I found 0.2 to be a pretty good value, right? But this is just like any other kind of interpolation. This is how much to interpolate this transform towards this one. So we're doing about 20%. Smaller numbers will make it go more slowly. But what you'll see when is the result is that everything is a lot more smooth, right? Our tank is very smooth at going over the faces and at transitioning between them because we're not snapping it all the way to the new face in one frame. All right, and that's it. That's how you get a body that will align itself with 
a surface. And this will work if you're, this will work just as well if you're on a sphere or any other kind of uh, mesh that has a lot more normals than this low poly terrain. But I think it looks pretty good driving over this rough surface. All right, I hope this was a helpful tutorial to get your 3D projects going. Leave your comments and questions in the comment section below, and I will see you in a future Godot recipe. Thanks for watching. This tutorial is part of my new Godot recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.